Hello everyone, this is Russell Conti from Sewing Arts Centers in Santa Monica, California, presenting you the instructions for our 2017 row by row block. Our inspiration comes from the Santa Monica Pier with the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel with the backdrop of the Santa Monica Mountains behind it. It's a northern view. So without further ado, let's talk about what you're going to need for the project. With the kit, you're going to receive printed instructions. Okay. It'll also have a silhouette of the pattern there for the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel, but no worries. You're going to also receive in your kit a laser cut roller coaster Ferris wheel die, and that's going to be a fusible applique. You'll also receive a piece of the fabric that we'll talk about in just a few minutes here. You're going to, and the last thing in the kit that you'll have is a piece of freezer paper that's roughly 38 inches by 18 inches wide. Okay. Basic sewing supplies you're going to need your sewing machine, of course, you need a rotary cutter, a ruler, and a mat. The ruler that'll make your life a little easier is a 36 and a half inch ruler. It'll give you more length to be able to cut with when we're doing our horizontal cuts. But if you don't have that, your six by 24 will work quite successfully. You'll want some fabric shears for cutting later on. Of course, you want good quality sewing machine needles. I use a size 70 sharp and I like to keep my stitch length at two millimeters for a good tight stitch. Roxanne's glue based. We're going to use that for the technique when we get ready for the mountains. A good quality sewing thread, 100% cotton is what I use, and my thread to choice is Mettler 50 weight. And then finally, you're going to need some starch, a receptacle for your starch, and a little brush to apply it. We're going to be using the Sharon Chamber piece lique technique for attaching the mountain backdrop to the sky. So if you're not familiar with that, you can research that online. Sharon Chamber, S C H A M B E R, and piece lique, P I E C L I Q U E. It's an amazing technique for doing curved piecing. But you're going to need some starch, and we don't want the foam part of it, we just want the water part of it. So just take your starch and spray it into a receptacle, let the foam rest, and it will become fluid again. That's what we want. If you have access to it, I like to use the liquid starch, but the spray starch will work quite fine. Okay, our fabric is taken from the collection, the Robert Kaufman Van Gogh collection. And what we're going to use is the dark blue to medium blue is going to be our back drop for the sky. This section in the center is going to be the water and the, this portion is going to be our mountain range. So roughly nine inches up from the bottom or 11 inches up from the top over here, you're going to make a cut. And then once you've done that, you're going to make another cut four inches away from the first, just to get a strip out of the center. That's rough. That's four inches wide. One thing I didn't know, point out yet is the selvage. Make sure you remove the selvage from the edge of the fabric. The piece that you're receiving is about 21 to 22 inches wide, depending on the type of the selvage as it was cut, and it's 48 inches long. So go ahead and cut that away. It should be about three quarters to an inch. Once you've cut it, we're going to then go ahead and stack those cuts one on top of the other, and then we're going to subcut those. So here they are stacked. Here's my sky portion. And I didn't cut the selvage away, but you want to make certain yours is cut away. We're going to stack that on top and then we're going to stack that on top of there. When we get ready, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and sub cut them. And in the pattern instructions, it tells you how many cuts to make and it tells you what those distances should be. But the first one's going to be six and three quarters inches. The next one, three, the next one, six and a half, four and a half, two, four, four and three quarters, six and a half, two, four. And the final one will be uh, roughly three inches. Not a big deal. It's just the end of the fabric. Once we've Subcut these, we're going to start with our water portion, which is this portion, and we're going to assemble that. Let me move that aside so I can show you. Every alternating piece, what you want to do is just rotate it. We're going to do this for the sky and the mountains as well. Go ahead and sew them together with a scant quarter inch seam allowance, and then your depression seam allowance is open. Okay. Once you've completed that, you're, it's ready to set aside. And we'll start with the sky. Same fashion, you're going to rotate or flip every other piece. And then you're going to reassemble them, pressing your seam allowances open. That will give you this piece. And then you're going to come back in and we're going to sub cut this on the horizontal as well. So we're going to want to clean cut the bottom, we're going to want to clean cut the top so that they're parallel to one another. And we'll come back and subcut those. And when you do that, it's going to look like this. The darkest portion of it, or the one that's toward the bottom in this case, is going to be cut at an inch and a half. And then you're going to come back and you're going to cut on the opposite side, the top, an inch and three quarters. 
what we're going to do to create our juxtaposition, we're just going to take that and place it in between. We'll resew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then we'll press our seam allowances open, and that will result in your sky looking like this. Once you've completed that section, then you're ready for the next. We'll start on our mountains. Our mountains are done in the same fashion as the sky and the water for the first step. Flip the alternating pieces, sew them together, press the seam allowances open. And then we're going to go ahead and clean cut or true up the sides so they're clean finished. And we're going to sub cut those as well. Our bottom piece is going to be cut at two inches. Our top piece is going to be cut at two and a half. And so we're going to cut the bottom one first, then we're going to cut them and cut the top. Once we've done that, we're going to rotate the positions. So the top joins with the bottom. Okay. The next piece gets cut at an inch and a half. And then we come to the top again and we cut this at an inch and three quarters. And that's going to rotate and place there. The final piece is roughly two and a half to three inches. It's just the, the unfinished piece. We're not going to cut it. It's already cut. And that gets placed there. That becomes the top of our mountain range. We'll go ahead and sew them together. We'll press our seam allowances open. And finally, you'll have a piece that looks like that. Now we're ready to create our mountain range template. You're going to have a piece of freezer paper in your kit that is 18 inches wide by about 38 inches long. You're going to want to split it in half lengthwise. And then what we want to do is we want to iron those together. We want to heat set them so that they act as one piece. So we place the shiny side of it to the matte side of the other piece. We want the shiny side on both pieces face down. We take it to the ironing board and we just take the heat of the iron to set them together. Once you've done that, on the shiny side, you're going to draw your mountain range template because the shiny side actually ends up being the face side of it, the right side. And so I took a micron pen, a permanent pen, and just traced my line. Okay. You don't want to get too deep with the hills and the valleys, okay, because they can be a little bit difficult to turn when we get ready for that, but it does still work if, they're, if they are more aggressive. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and cut it apart, and you're going to remove the sky portion of it. We don't need that any longer. Now, what happens is so I'm going to take our mountain range piece again. I'm going to place that face down. We'll place our mountain range face down as well. We'll place that so that the raw edge at the bottom pretty much matches up there, leaving us ample room up here to go ahead and trim our seam allowance because we need a quarter inch seam allowance along this upper edge when we get finished with it. So at this point, what we want to do is take it back to the ironing board, face side or the shiny side of the template to the wrong side of the fabric, and we're going to iron those together so they create a temporary bond for us. So I've got several portions of the steps in play here. What we want to do, as I indicated, is we want to go ahead and cut away the upper portion, leaving ourselves a quarter inch seam allowance along the top. So in this case, I've done left a little bit just so I could show you, but again, a quarter inch seam allowance at the top all the way along the edge. Okay, this goes away. This is adhered. Now in my case, it's not anymore, but yours will be. And we take the starch at this point, the little brush, and right along the seam allowance portion of it, of the fabric, we're going to brush it with the water or the starch. Now don't be afraid to get it on the template, that's quite fine, but we, the goal is not to saturate the template, but to saturate the fabric. Once you put the starch on there, you're just going to press it to the back right along the edge, and you're going to take the heat of the iron and starch it in place. It'll lay nice and flat right there, giving you a really crisp edge for the mountain range. If you've done that along the whole top, then you'll go ahead and remove the template. It'll be a little sticky, but it'll just peel right off. And okay, so I've already taken it and I've glued a portion of it together. Okay. So right here I use the Roxanne's glue base right here along the upper edge and then I heat set it with the iron to get it to stay temporarily. What we want to do is go ahead and open this up and we're place a bead of glue right along the crease where the seam allowance is, where it's folded back. You don't have to be too excessive with it. And then we're going to place it right back where we want it to be. And if everything is sewn really precisely, your verticals and your horizontals will match up. Okay, if they don't, don't worry about it. It'll still look quite awesome when you're done. We're going to heat set this to get it to lay in place. And then at this point, we would go and use a Sharon Chamber piece locate technique for sewing them. If you're uncomfortable with that, it's also equally acceptable to come back through with a modern filament thread or do a small zigzag right along this perimeter of the mountain, the upper edge. Okay, using the Sharon Chamber piece locate technique, what you would do is you'd come to the back 
and we're going to trim away the excess seam allowance or the excess fabric to create the seam allowance. So we've got a quarter inch seam allowance right here. And then we would come back through and we would stitch right in the ditch between the two layers of fabric. It allows us to piece the curve really nicely and flat. And then you would trim the excess fabric away, of course. Okay, now that we're done with that portion, we're ready for our final construction portion. And that's where we reintroduce the water and we attach our Ferris wheel and roller coaster. So the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster are a fusible applique. They have a paper backing on it that you'll want to remove. You're going to place that so that the legs of the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster match up to the bottom of the mountain range on the edge of the fabric. And then there's going to be a quarter inch overlap here about, right where those join. And the placement for it is just a matter of personal preference, not a right or wrong. You're going to fuse that in place. Once you fuse that in place, you're simply going to take the water portion and sew that to the bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance. And in this case, I press the seam allowances toward the bottom. You can press them open if you like, but getting all this excess fabric pressed open and back on itself is a little bit more difficult. So I press them to the bottom at this case. And you're done with your block. When you've completed, you have a block that's roughly 11 to 13 inches wide, depending on how you used your fabric, okay? And about 42 inches long. So you have lots of playroom in here in order to be able to accomplish the row by row block, which finishes at nine inches by 36 inches. So you need to make certain you cut it nine and a half inches tall and 36 and a half inches wide. So that concludes the pattern instructions for our Row by Row Experience 2017 block. I hope you enjoyed making it as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. If you have any questions or concerns at all, please don't hesitate to give us a call. The phone number is 310-450-4300. You can also email me at russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, at sewingarts, S-E-W-I-N-G-A-R-T-S dot com. I'd love to see, hear your feedback, and I'd actually love to see pictures of your finished blocks when you complete them. Hope you have a great Row by Row 2017 experience. Thank you.